So the generalization to the nonlinear case, uh, generalization to the nonlinear case is if I have a, a dw dt plus dw dx equal to zero, I can write it down as a dwi dt okay plus uh, well, here it's uh, I, I shouldn't do finite difference anymore because if f is nonlinear, I can have shock waves, right? Basically, I have to say plus uh, my f at i plus half minus f i at i minus half. But here, uh, it's it's okay to uh, okay. So uh, let me let me uh, let me go back to. So okay, so so let me let me go back a little bit for for finite volume. Uh, let me actually go back a little bit. Uh, sorry for that. So so let's let's uh, go back to the linear case and uh, discuss uh, how does this actually work for finite volume, right? So instead of uh, uh, instead of directly jumping to nonlinear case, let's actually uh, first understand what does a numerical dissipation mean in the context of finite volume. So back so let's actually write down the same scheme as we derived before dw dt uh, plus a central difference scheme is equal I mean we have a u here absolute value of u uh, over 2 times the second uh, derivative Okay, or, or uh, we can write it as uh, uh, yeah. Let, let's let's write it that way. I mean, the key thing is saying here that instead of a dx square, which is what you need to approximate second order derivative, we have dx. So it's really like a second order derivative times the grid spacing, right? So it's a very small second order derivative, and the smaller your grid spacing is, uh, the smaller the dissipation is. So how do we write this as a finite volume scheme? Okay, so let's consider this term by term. So first, uh, let's say how do we write this as a finite volume scheme. Well, this can be written as delta x times some flux at x i plus half minus some flux at x uh, at i minus half. Right. So this is what finite volume scheme has to do. And if you organize things around, and uh, what's more important is that uh, f i plus half f has to be the same as x, uh, has to be the same seen from the ith grid point and i minus one grid point. And if you organize things around, you can see that uh, you can actually easily achieve this by saying f i plus half is equal to half of u times w i plus one plus u times w i. Or the central averaging flux scheme that we know that didn't work, right? And uh, similarly, f of i minus half is just equal to half of u uh, w i plus u w i minus one. So, so if you plug these both into here, you see the w i term cancels out, and you only get w i plus one and w i minus one, which is exactly the Central difference. Okay, so now the question is, how do I incorporate the numerical dissipation into the flux? And again, the objective is to make this conservative, right? We have to say that f i plus half has to be the same, seen from the i grid point and i minus one grid point. So the similar property as this one have because. Uh, if you shift the index by minus one, this becomes i, this becomes i minus one, and the flux is exactly the same as this, right? This is required for numerical conservation. Okay, so the right-hand side term can be incorporated by splitting this into two. So this is equal to u 
and we can say this is wi plus 1 minus wi minus wi minus wi minus 1. So this is really saying second order derivative is the derivative of derivative. So the second order finite difference is the finite difference of finite difference. Right? Okay, so now we just incorporate each term over here. Fi plus half would be this uh, minus absolute value of u over 2, wi plus 1 minus wi divided by delta x, and uh, f of i minus 2 would be this minus uh, the same thing. So adding numerical dissipation on the right-hand side of the equation is equivalent in the linear case of adding a first-order derivative to the flux, right? Or basically adding, so this is basically adding a so-called diffusion term into the flux. And uh, the amount of numerical dissipation, you, uh, uh, the amount of uh, derivative term you add into the flux is proportional to the half of the absolute value of the wave speed. That's what's going to be generalized to the nonlinear case. So in the nonlinear case, uh, we can set fi plus half into basically the flux function um, well, of wi plus flux function of wi plus 1 divided by 2 minus the absolute value of uh, df dw evaluated at the interface divided by 2 times the same numerical dissipation. And uh, uh, that's another way of, basically that's one approximate Riemann solver. And uh, that is going to be generalized to the system of equation case in which instead of uh, taking the absolute value of a scalar derivative, you can take a certain norm of a matrix derivative, right? So if f is a vector, w is a vector, df dw would get you a matrix. And uh, instead of taking absolute value in the scalar case, you take a norm in the vector case. And that is guaranteed to have enough numerical dissipation, maybe too much, right? So there are better ribbon solvers that add less numerical dissipation, but then it has to be equation specific. And uh, uh, just taking the norm of uh, dfdw is one way of getting one approximate Riemann solver that is general across uh, different equations. All right, so we'll continue this uh, next lecture and demonstrate this for shallow water equations and uh, also discuss final volume in multiple dimensions.